So in the last video, we looked at the problem that's created by having a right half plane zero due to the compensation capacitor that we added uh, in order to uh, do pole splitting compensation. We have one solution, uh, which would be to add a buffer to remove the right half plane zero. So adding a buffer would remove the feed forward path. And remember, when we have a feed forward path, that's what creates the right half plane zero. So here, we would add our compensation capacitor, and we would add a voltage buffer in the reverse direction, such that it allowed our compensation to occur, but doesn't allow current to propagate in the forward direction. All right, so we have our compensation capacitor, CC. We have a buffer that's keeping uh, current from uh, feeding forward. Uh, toward from the uh, uh, internal node to the output node. Now we saw this uh, buffer the same way we did before. We would do KCL at our node one and node two. And if we do so, we would find the following poles and zeros. Omega P1 is the same as before, one over GM2 R2 CC. R1. Omega P2 is the same as before, GM2 over CL. Omega P3 is equal to 1 over RO times C1, where RO is the output resistance of the buffer. If we design the buffer well, the output resistance of the buffer should be low because an ideal voltage buffer would have a low output impedance. Finally, we have a zero that's equal to one over RO times CC, but this is a left half plane zero. So the phase shift actually helps us. Well, we're going to add a source follower. And we can bias that source follower by adding an extra current source in our bias path. And this is a common drain amplifier or a source follower. So our output is on the source. So there we have a simple solution that adds a buffer. What's wrong with this? Well, one, it adds extra power. If we want that omega P3 to be at a really high frequency, we need to lower the resistance of the, the output resistance of the buffer. And we know that the output resistance of the source follower is approximately equal to one over GM. In order to reduce the impedance, that means we need to increase GM, uh, which means we would need either much more current or a much bigger uh, transistor, which is also going to affect the loading. So we're gonna add extra power consumption in order to buffer this transistor. Uh, we're going to uh, impact the loading with the buffer. So that's gonna be a bit of a problem. So let's look at a slightly different solution. We're going to move the right half plane zero by adding what we're going to call a nulling resistor. Let's remember our nulling resistor can be implemented with a MOS transistor in the triode region. So here's what our solution looks like. We're going to add the compensation capacitor and we're going to add a resistor in the compensation path. So here we have CC and we have our nulling resistor. We'll call it RZ. Now, again, we can do KCL at node one and node two in order to find our new pole and zero locations. Uh, we would find a transfer function and we could uh, pull out the pole and zero locations of this particular transfer function. Uh, and if we do so, we'll find that the uh, omega P1 and omega P2 aren't affected. So omega P1 is still one over GM2, R2, CC, R1, 
omega P2 is still approximately equal to GM2 over C sub L. We have a new pole, omega P3, that's equal to one over RZ times C1. And we have a zero that's equal to one over CC times one over GM2 minus RZ. So now we see we have independent control over RZ, over the omega Z1 by simply resizing RZ. How do we implement this? Well, let's add a MOS transistor. This is gonna have some DC bias at its gate. And we're gonna put the compensation capacitor in feedback in the feedback path as well. So here we have the compensation capacitor and we have a MOS transistor acting as a resistor. So the next question that we're going to ask is how do we size the resistance optimally? And we'll look at the optimal resistance sizing in the next video.